Hello everyone, welcome back to Data Leveling. I'm Han and in today's video, we will learn how to create a consistent character face using an image prompt adapter or what we call IP adapter. What we want to achieve here is when we give an image prompt of a face or clothing and with the mixture of text prompts to achieve a character that is able to maintain the face details consistently. So be it you want to create an AI Instagram model or creating a consistent face for a certain branding or storytelling this video should help you to a certain extent. So IP Adapter is a project from Tencent AI Labs and a quick explanation on how the IP Adapter works is that instead of only using the traditional text to image prompts, it adds a function to use image as a prompt or what we call image to image. How it differs from previous works that have attempted this is that the training process of the model does not affect the text prompt as it is using a decoupled cross-attention mechanism for text features and image features. If you want to learn more about how it works backend, you can read more about it from their research paper. I will put all the relevant links in the description. I would also like to thank Matteo, who is the developer, bringing us these custom Confi UI IP adapter nodes and working really hard to update it regularly to be on track with the Tencent AI Lab repository. You can check out his YouTube channel, Latent Vision. His content is focused on IP adapters ranging from a beginner to an advanced level. Before we move on, I suggest you watch my previous video on installing Inside Face for Confi UI on Windows as inside face is a requirement for IP adapter face ID models and I see a lot of people having issues with installing it. Assuming you have inside face installed, let's install the dependencies required. Head over to Confi UI Manager. Under the custom node section, search for IP adapter and install the Confi UI IP adapter plus nodes. Next, we want to search for impact and install the Confi UI impact pack nodes. Lastly, search for control and install the aux control net preprocessor nodes. And if you are using SD 1.5, search for ultimate and install the ultimate stable diffusion upscale nodes. We also have to download a clip vision model from the Confi UI manager models tab. Search for clip and install the one that says VITH. Mine says not installed as I actually installed it manually. For the IP adapter models, there are two parts to this, Face ID IP adapters and normal IP adapters. We will first download the Face ID IP adapter models. Visit the Face ID IP adapter repository in the description and download those in red. For the normal IP adapter models, visit the IP adapter repository in the description. Then you will see two subsections, one for SDXL and one for SD 1.5. If you are using SDXL, download those in red. And if you are using SD 1.5, download these models. Now we will place the models into the Confi UI model folders. Those models with LoRa in the file name will go into the LoRa's folder and the others will go into the IP adapter folder. If you don't have an IP adapter folder, you can create one and name it IP adapter with no spacing. If you are not using the default Confi UI models folder, Remember to update the directory path for IP adapter in the Confi UI Extra Models path file. Alright, let's get started. Make sure you restart Confi UI to have everything updated. The first thing we want to work on is getting a face. I will be generating one using a SDXL checkpoint model as I want my character face to have more details. If your system is unable to run SDXL models due to the high VRAM requirements, you can still watch through the video first as the concepts are similar, it's just using of different model variants. Towards the end of the video, I will also have a section where I show which models to use for SD 1.5. I will try to create a Korean idol like girl to use for the human model and I will be using the Liu Sam Hello World checkpoint model simply because I like the details of this checkpoint model more than the others. As I'm using an SDXL model, we can use a larger pixel dimensions to capture more details. I will be using 1024 pixels. The negative prompts slightly differ between different models, hence I will just use one that is more generic and good for realism. The prompts I used are mainly to describe the face that I want. The first two lines are for setting the image environment and the subsequent lines are to describe the facial features. As for the sampler, you can play around with the configurations but I'm using a basic one that usually gives me decent results. 
For the face feature prompts, I'm using mainly features that will stand out more and commonly found in Korean idols. I also broke the lines for the prompts and ordered it in a top-down fashion in terms of face structure so that it is easier for me to change specific parts. You can add more weight to a specific prompt by highlighting the word and hit the Ctrl and UP key. I will also be adding a group for easy separation. You can do this easily by holding Ctrl and clicking all those nodes that you want to be in the group. Then right click a blank space and select add group for selected nodes. Once we are confirmed with a face to work with, we will create a load image node. We will then right click on the generated face select copy clip space and then right click the load image and select paste clip space like this. The next step is to crop the image to only have the face in the center of the image. The width and height should be equal as the face IP adapter models assume a square input. The X axis controls the horizontal movement and the Y axis controls the vertical movement. We will then go into the IP adapter nodes and select prepare image for inside face. You can sharpen the image if you want by tweaking the sharpening variable, but since my image is already very sharp, I will skip this step. The pad around variable is recommended for better accuracy. Once that is done, we will group it up and call this group image pre-processing. One additional step that I use for slightly better accuracy is to mask out the area of interest. We can do that by creating another load image node, copy the clip space image over and then right click the image and select open in SAM detector. So SAM stands for segment anything model that is developed by Meta and you can simply select a point of interest and it will segment out the object. When you left click, it means a positive dot prompt and right click is a negative dot prompt. Once you're ready, click on detect. Increasing the confidence scale will segment out more precise objects and a lower confidence scale will segment out a more generic object. If the mask is not perfect, you can right click on the image and select open in mask editor and complete the remaining imperfections. I will first show an example where we only mask out the face without the hair. The next step is to create an apply IP adapter face ID node. This part is where it gets a little bit tricky because there is another node called apply IP adapter. I will create another checkpoint loader node as I want to use a different one from the face generator earlier. I will be using Juggernaut XL for this model. We will then create a LoRa model. I will be using the node that says load LoRa model only. Once that is created, join up the lines from the checkpoint model to the LoRa loader to the IP adapter. For the IP adapter loader, I will place it above my IP adapter node and select IP adapter face ID plus V2 SDXL. For the clip vision node, we will select the clip vision model that you have downloaded earlier and for inside face, we will use CPU over here. We will then link up the image and the mask. For the face ID configuration, I will set the weight to 0.5 and since we are using the V2 model, set the face ID V2 to true and set the weight V2 to 1.5. So it may get a little bit confusing due to all the different models from Tencent Lab. Just remember that the apply IP adapter face ID node requires a face ID model and every other models will use the apply IP adapter node. The keyword to look out for is Face ID in the model's name. This might change in the future if there is an update to the nodes, but for now, this is what we have to do. Before I forget, we have to set the LoRa strength to be around 0.4. For the latent image, we will use 1024 by 1024 pixels. So usually the first time loading it, you will take a long time, especially for inside face. Okay, sometimes we see a totally different face when just masking the face. So now I will mask out the entire head, including the hair as well. The hair is consistent now, but the face is still performing poorly. 
So what we can do to improve the accuracy is by applying one more round of IP adapter. You can either use the IP adapter face ID node or the normal one. I will be using the normal one as I have better results with it. For the IP adapter model, we will be using IP adapter plus face SDXL. So if you are using the normal apply IP adapter node and working with face, we will use the one that has plus face and if working with other items in the image, we will use the model that says IP adapter plus SDXL without the face word. We will then link up the clip vision and images and for the model, we will link it up to the previous apply IP adapter face ID node and for the attention mask, use the same one as well. For this model, it is important to set it to a lower weight of around 0.2 to 0.4. Now if we see the results, it is much closer to the reference image. Let's add some text prompt to set the environment of the output. We can also change the height of the latent image to have a portrait look to capture more details. Sometimes, we might get an image that is too zoomed out and SDXL model will not perform well as the face requires more pixels to show the details properly. So we can fix that by changing the negative prompt. And from here on, we can see that every image generated will have a more consistent face to the base reference image. Another power of IP adapter is that we can use it to adapt the clothes for the model. Most of the time we use text to set the clothes but we might not get exactly what we have in mind. So what we can do here is to have a reference image of the clothes you want to see on the model and apply it the same way we did before for the face. It will be good to color off the face of the fashion model that you are using with paint or while snipping the screenshot so that it will not confuse the model with the original face we want to use. We will do the same as before but this time our IP adapter model will be using the IP adapter plus STXL model. Connect the lines and don't forget to mask out the clothes that you want. If your character is fully clothed like mine, do also add some additional portions like legs so that the IP adapter model will know better. For the strength, we can set it to anywhere around 0.3 to 0.5 and you should get decent results. I have to mention that this will not completely give you an exact copy of the clothes but it will produce a similarity of at least 85%. So now we can try it on with a different clothing. I will use a grey dress as an example. As we can see, most of the results are good and able to maintain the face while also maintaining the clothes. But we are not done yet. We can also use a control net to change the pose we want for our AI human model. We start by loading an image of a person doing a certain pose. From the control net preprocessor node section, select the DW pose estimator. This node allows you to specifically choose certain areas that you want to detect. For the dimensions, I will be using 1024 to be consistent with the latent image. The bonding box detector uses YOLO, which stands for You Only Look Once. It is the current state-of-the-art object detection model. Both YOLO X and YOLO NAS works pretty well in determining the bonding box location, but you usually want to choose the large version as it is trained with more parameters. 
for the post estimator, I will use the ONNX version as well. This is because ONNX is usually used more often for production in the industry. We will then create a preview image node to have a sense of what the post will look like. Next, we are going to create an apply control net node. Since we are using SDXL model, we will need to use the SDXL control net preprocessor. I will be using the Tibo XL open post model. For the control net strength, we will set it to a range between 0.8 to 1. I have to mention that when we use the IP adapter for the clothing, sometimes the pose of the fashion model might also be taken in as well, depending on the weight of the IP adapter. When that happens, remember to increase the control net strength. Let's try out a different pose to see the effects. Alright, I will now start with SD 1.5. The first thing we need to do is to disable the sampling so that it will not run when we are still doing the pre-processing step. You can right click on the group, select nodes, then hit the Ctrl and B key or you can right click and click on bypass group nodes. For generating the face, we just have to change the model and the latent image size. We will then perform the same step of cropping only the face. Without the head masking, it still works decently but I just do it out of practice. We will then change the checkpoint models, the LoRa's and the IP adapters. So for most of the IP adapter SDXL models I used earlier, there is a 1.5 variant as well. You just have to be careful to choose the right one. We also have to change the latent image to be 512 by 768. As we can see, I forget to change the IP adapter for the clothes, therefore we get some weird results. For the control net, also change to SD 1.5 version and change the resolution to 512. Once you are done with it, I suggest to upscale the image. If you don't know how to do it, you can check out my Comfy UI upscale image video where I share the best ways to upscale an image. If let's say you are unable to find a pose that you want from the internet, you can try out this web application called Magic Poser. It's free and easy to use and you don't even require an account to use it. So once we are in, we can create a character by selecting Add. The mouse scroll is used to zoom in and out. Holding the left click will rotate the camera angle and holding the right click will move the camera angle in a 2D space. If you click on the character and select Presets, you can also use some of the poses that was already made. You can make adjustments to the pose by dragging those parts that have black labels. Once you finalize on a pose, select Preview at the top and screen capture it. Another cool feature that Magic Poser has is that you can change the hands of the model to swap between right or left hand. You can just click on the label below the hand pose word. If let's say you are using line art or other control net preprocessors, in some cases the sky and the ground matters, so you can choose to enable or disable it from the toggle tab. Okay, I think that's about it. If you learned something from this video, do help to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. It will really help the channel grow and serves as motivation for me as well. If you face any difficulties following the videos, do also leave a comment and I will try my best to help you. And remember, don't stop leveling up.